To create a progress bar in CapCut, we first need to open up CapCut and we're gonna modify the properties for CapCut because of some of the elements I'm giving you later. So we're gonna click on modify here. The only thing we wanna change is the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Yours might already be at 30 frames a second. If not, set it at 30 frames a second so it works with what I provide you with. Then we're gonna hit save. Next, we're gonna jump over to import and click on stock materials. Notice they just changed that name. All we want is a still image or a video to use to make the background. Let's start with something simple like this plain white still image. And let's go ahead and stretch it out to 10 seconds. So we can make a 10 second or so progress bar. We can see how long it is as we drag our playhead by looking right here at this time code window. So we're gonna make it exactly 10 seconds. And to get rid of the end, we could either just click and drag this over or type the letter W. Now we've got 10 seconds of a big white box, but to make it a progress bar, we're just gonna go ahead and click on mask and choose rectangle and make it into the shape of a progress bar, which would be, I don't know, something like that maybe. To make the bar move, we're going to right click on it again, choose create compound clip and add another mask, this time the horizontal mask. We're going to flip this mask around by clicking here and we're gonna position our playhead at the very beginning of the timeline, which it already was, but we're making sure. We're going to set a keyframe right here and we're gonna position the mask at the starting position just by clicking and dragging all the way to the left until it goes away. Now we're going to go to the end of this image which is the next edit point. To go to the next edit point, we could click and drag, or we could just type the down arrow key on our keyboard, and then the left arrow to go back one frame, so we're actually on it. Now we're going to drag this mask to the right until we see the whole thing, and then, bam, now we've got a progress bar, and it kind of looks better if you've got something underneath it, so let's go ahead and import some footage. How about this sailing footage? We'll Drop that into the timeline, put the bar on top, drag them both down. You can hit the down arrow to get to the end. And we're gonna type the letter W to get rid of all of this stuff. Bam, that went away. And now we've got a progress bar showing how long it's gonna take us to sail across the world. And with the progress bar, it doesn't have to be in the middle. We could put it wherever we want. We can click it, we can drag it down here and it'll look just fine and work just fine. To make it slightly more fancy, let's go to the end of the timeline and find something else for the background. Let's go back into stock material. Go ahead and select a background again. Notice that it remembers our recent searches. So I'll just type background. And here's a black still image. I'm going to have that last the duration of our video as well. I'm gonna drag it under here. Now all we need to do is make it kind of work with what we have. There are a couple of ways to do this. We could add a mask or we could just mess with the position and scale. I don't want to scale this uniformly. I want to scale it unevenly. So I am going to uncheck this uniform scale box and then I'm gonna drag this down here like this and it's letting me scale it unevenly like that. And it looks good, pretty close to that, right? and then come in a bit. And you just mess with it until it's about where you want it to be. Click off so you can see how it looks. Let's see, right there's not bad. And if you wanna move with precision, we can see it's maybe a little more narrow on the top than the bottom. So we can just click on it and then we can adjust it with these sliders right here. So I'm just going to change the position just a little bit with that. And I'll mess with the width and maybe add one more percentage to it. Then I'll click off and bam, we have a simple progress bar that's really easy to create in CapCut. Now, if we wanna make it more fun, we could use another image for either this background box or the bar itself. And to do that, I'm just gonna take this colorful image and drag it over this compound clip here. And bam, it's gonna allow me to replace it. And it's gonna get me kind of halfway there when I click replace clip and it's halfway there because it's already animated and moving, so I don't have to reanimate it. I just need to adjust the scale. So to do that, I'm going to make sure it's highlighted, make sure uniform scale is turned off, and then we're just gonna mess with this until I get it to fit in the box right here. And when we're done, we get something that looks like that. So a slightly more fancy progress bar, easy peasy. If you're serious about YouTube and CapCut, you really wanna check out my course, Edit with Trevin Master CapCut, because in my course, I go from A to Z, I teach you everything CapCut can do, and you can learn to edit in like two days. Plus, I have a special section where I teach you everything you need to do to get more views and more subscribers. Do you want more views subscribers? Put heck yes in the comments below if you do. I think you do, I know I do. In that section of my course, I teach you everything you need to do to get more subscribers and more views with every video. Like I promise it works. It's just take these steps, 
You get more views and more subs every time. So check out my course at mastercapcut.com or click the link in the description. But what if you want to flip it on its head and have it be vertical? Will I select both of these layers, right click, choose create compound clip. Then I can just rotate it by either clicking on this guy right here or typing in minus 90 and then scaling it down, positioning it wherever we want. And now we have a vertical progress bar. Are we there yet? Next, let me import a couple elements that I'm giving to you, linked in the description below. In fact, all this stuff that I'm using is linked in the description below, including this sailing video here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on device, import, and we'll get all the rest of the stuff in here besides the sailboat, lots of stuff. I'll show you all of it in a minute, but I have a bar here that is already, you know, bar sized. And I also have a box that is already the right size. And for this one, we're just going to drag these over to the left, make them last the duration of this video. And this will allow us to see through the box and guess what we do. We don't need to do much of anything really. We just click on the bar, go over to mask, click on horizontal, flip this guy so he is facing the right direction, position the playhead at the very beginning. We're just doing exactly the same thing as what we did before. I'm setting a keyframe here and I want this keyframe to mark the beginning of this starting right here. So I'm gonna drag this to where I want this to start. We've got a keyframe down here. Now I'm gonna to go to the end of the timeline, how? With the down arrow and then to the left with the left arrow. So we're on this very last frame. And all we do now is drag this slider all the way to the right until we get to the end of it. And bam, we're done. We can play it, looks like that. And if we wanna reposition it, we just select both of these clips, right click, choose create compound clip. And now we can position this wherever we want. And it will look like this up here. When we play it, it'll look like this. And you don't need to use the white thing where you can use anything to put behind there. You have both of these elements to play with till your heart's content if you hit that link in the description. Now let's mess with some countdown timers and go from simple to a little cooler. To start, all we need is some text. I'm just gonna click on text, drag the default text down to the timeline. And I don't want it to last the entire duration. I want this to be a countdown text. So this is kind of the hard way. There's an easy way I'm gonna show you in a minute. It's, I mean, it's not hard, it's easy. It just takes a little bit longer. So we got default text and we're just going to type a number. I don't know, how about 10 for a 10 second countdown? And let's choose a font that sucks less than the system font. How about modern? That's cool, because it's nice and big. So there's 10, right? So for a 10 second countdown timer, you just duplicate that and change the number 10 times. So I'll hit Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, go to the next edit with a down arrow and hit Command V on a Mac, Control V on a PC and paste it. And I'll just do that 10 times. And then you literally just go through and change all of these to the other number. So that's slow because it's one number at a time, but it works fine. Just click, change the number. And so at the most basic level, here's a 10 second countdown timer. You're just manually adding the numbers. Now to make it a little more fancy, let's do something else. Let's add another text layer, take default text. This time I want this to go to the end and we're going to type the letter O, capital O like this. And then we're gonna use the system font might work. Let's see, we're just gonna scale it up a little bit. Now that's, that's that's still too too fat, too beefy. So let's try Monsterat. Yeah, that's better. So now let's just make sure it's centered exactly. I think that's pretty close, right? Boom, 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 boom. We can make that maybe a little bit bigger. And it's just, it's just a font, ding. And so that's okay. So that's slightly better. To make this a little more fun, we want to add a little animation to the text. So I'm gonna click on this first text, the 10. Go to text, animation. Now you can use any animation but bounce in works pretty great. And spring is also pretty good. Let's do spring, bam. And we can change the duration. So it takes a little bit longer for that to appear. So it's a little more fun, maybe seven frames. Let's see if we like that. Boom, 10, yeah, I, I like that. And then I'm gonna right click on this and choose copy attributes and select all of these. And I'm gonna right click on this and choose paste attributes. And this will allow me, and this is new, allow me to paste that animation. And so I don't need these other text effects. I just need the in. So I'll deselect text and select in and choose paste. And now it's ready to rock. Nine, eight, seven. So that's, that's not bad. And if you wanna move it around, we highlight all of these and just choose create compound clip. And now we can put this wherever we want, somewhere down here. So it's nice and readable in the dark blue ocean and 10. Nine, 
8. So that's pretty, pretty fancy, right? <laughs> and very easy to do in CapCut. Now let's try something a little bit more fancy. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go to the footage that I've created for you. And I've given you a 60 second countdown timer here. So you can literally just put that anywhere you want. Now you might notice that the file size is really big. It's because this text and the other elements I gave you have what's called an alpha channel, which lets you see through them. So you don't have to do any magic over here. They just, they just work. That's why they're bigger, fatter files. So let me just drag this out. So this is 60 seconds and you can see what that looks like. And you can move it anywhere you want, just like that and scale it to your heart's content. And I've got one that is going backwards. And I also gave you one that is going forwards, which looks like this. So you can have a stopwatch, you know, count forward, do whatever you want with that one. Let's mess with this countdown timer a little more to make it a little cooler. What we can do is jump over into stock material. Remember, they just renamed it stock materials. And let's choose a cool kind of background for it. We'll go into background and see what they have that's that's kind of nifty. Okay, I haven't tried this, but that might look cool. And we need it to last the entire duration. So I can't stretch it because that's the entire thing. So I'm going to just Command C and Command V it all the way down the line. Now we're just going to scale this thing down. We don't want uniform scale, remember, because it's not going to be uniform. So I'll just drag this guy up and get it close. In fact, let me put the time code above it so I can have a better reference point. And I'm going to scale this first guy down a little more, you know, and because it's all centered, it's much easier to use just the sliders instead of trying to mess with the handles and like that and bam, it's scaled. So that's, that's, that's not bad. And then I could just paste those attributes. I can hit right click, copy attributes, and then right click again and paste attributes and all of that will probably work and bam. So all of those, all of those work fine and that's okay, but the opacity is too much. So let's just turn the opacity down on this guy by sliding down to blend and choosing opacity. And that looks a little bit better, right? And again, we could copy paste. Now we're just experimenting as we go. So that's why I'm copy pasting. I also could have, and what I should have done is just messed with this guy first and then pasted all those all the way down the road. But let's just go ahead and copy attributes again. And, and I want you to get used to using this feature because it's a super helpful feature. And in this one, all we need is the blend, but it's not going to matter if we just leave all those checked and then bam. And I should have highlighted all these right click, paste attributes and paste. And now this countdown looks like this. So it's, you know, it's, it's not bad, but it's not rounded. You know, it'd be nice if it was a rounded rectangle. How do, how do we do that? So we're just going to undo all of this and I'm just showing you different ways. And this is so you can learn how to use the program. It's not about making this exact replica of what I'm doing. It's about learning the features that CapCut has. And there are many ways to do things in CapCut. So for this guy, we're just going to get rid of all that stuff that we already did. We'll leave the opacity down because that's fine. But we want to make rounded edges. How do you make rounded edges? Well, we just use another mask. Click on mask, go to rectangle, and we scale this guy like this. And then right down here, we have this option for round corners. Let's go, oh, it's round corners like that. And now that looks way better, right? I mean, I'm not sure about the background I chose, but you get the idea. And then what we do is we just paste this thing all the way down the road again. And to make it easy to move this around and scale it, we're just gonna highlight all of that, right click and choose, create compound clip, and then bam, now we have this little timer thing that we can scale and put anywhere we want. Even though it's really, uh, you know, kind of ugly, that, that background I didn't love. It would have been better with like a black background that we just use gray, but hey, this is, this is how we learn. We, we, we try and fail and try and fail till we get something that's, that's beautiful. Now I'm gonna show you something you can do if you happen to like what's included in the stickers section of CapCut. If we click on stickers and scroll down to icons, we can find a cool little countdown timer, which is built in right here. I mean, this one's actually, it's pretty good. I'm gonna hit the command key on my Mac, the control key on my PC, and use my scroll wheel so I can zoom in here. And now I've got this built-in timer. The only catch with this guy is three, two, one. That's, that's all there is to it. So you could use a mask and cut out the middle and put your own numbers in here and make a compound clip and kind of use this. You would just mask the inside of this here. And others have tutorials on doing that. Um, the issue with that is CapCut's always changing stuff. Stickers are gonna be coming and going, so this might disappear. So instead of doing that, what I've done is I've created one for you that will never disappear because you can download it. If we click under device right here, we can find the countdown timers I've made for you. Now here is this 
Timer Solo. I've made this one in After Effects for you and you can just pop numbers in there if you want to, or you could just take the one I already gave you. Like, oh, here's one that's got just seconds in it. Deet, deet, deet. That's all yours and you can move it around, do whatever you want with it, you know, scale it, position it, whatever. And I've also given you one that has frames and seconds that looks like that. So that one's kind of cool. You can also move around. And I've got one that's got minutes, seconds, and frames for you. It's in your downloads. So if you haven't downloaded these, you want them. They're yours. You do whatever you want with them. Put them on your videos, whatever. And it starts at minute one and then just counts down like that. And these are all 60 seconds long. So you get all the way through this entire, entire video that we have here. Now, the ones that I provided you with are all countdown timers going backwards. If you wanted to go forward or put your own numbers in it, you would just grab this blank one right here. And then you could grab this time code where I'm going forward and drop it here. And then you'd be ready to rock with forward stuff. Now, if you're like, I don't, I don't want to see minutes because the minutes are, are not moving. They just start with minutes. You know, you might like it because it makes it a little more interesting with more stuff in there. But what you could do is say, hey, I just want to go forwards with seconds and frames. So to do that, we simply click on this guy. We jump over to guess where? Mask. Masks are amazing. You got you to get good at using masks. And then we just go like this, move it over, and we just cut out the stuff that we don't want. So we'll go like that, like that, slide it over a little bit, kind of center it so it's a little bit better. And then we're going to scale this up. Now, you don't scale it up by dragging the side. That just brings in more stuff. To scale it up, we click on Video Basic, and now we scale it up so it's a little bit bigger, so it fits in the frame right here. And we just kind of get it centered, and then bam, we have a stopwatch now going forwards all perfectly in sync and everything's lining up. And if you wanna move it around, you right click and you choose create compound clip. And now we can scale it and put it wherever we want and see what happens after sailing the ocean blue for 60 seconds. You can even use this sailing clip in your own videos. You know, you don't even have to give you credit. Down here in the corner, it would look like this. If this was complicated for you, you need a more beginner tutorial on CapCut, I just created one. It's uh, linked right up there in the top right. Go ahead and check it out right now. It, it might just change your life.